Uh, hi everyone, I am Salim and I will present our work on analyzing news exposure and consumption on social media. So as an introduction, uh, you probably know as th uh, that the, uh, with the popularization of social networks, the way people consume information has changed. Before, they used to uh, search and actively select the news sources they were reading from, but with social networks, news has started to appear as a byproduct of their social interactions. And this has brought uh, some dangers. There are several research studies and press reports uh, highlighting these dangers, and they are mainly focused on two aspects. First, uh, whether this online exposure uh, increases the dissemination of misinformation, and second, whether it increases the formation of filter bubbles. As a result, many uh, Many official authorities, such as the UNESCO and the G20, are uh, trying to provide uh, and enforce regulations on social platforms, and the objective is to mitigate risks uh, associated with misinformation and filter bubbles. However, to come up with uh, the adequate and uh, the appropriate regulation and to measure its efficiency, these uh, regulators need to have uh, a good understanding of the news ecosystem. Uh, precisely, we need to know to which extent uh, misinformation is prevalent on uh, on social networks and uh, what is uh, the political diversity of Facebook of social media news diets and the problem with all this is the limited access to data platforms do not make this data publicly available and external researchers and auditors do not have uh, the exact post users see and interact with on social networks the, uh, so to overcome this challenge, uh, previous studies have used mainly two different methods. First, they have tried to build news exposure using the tweets that were shared by users. And this has limitation as it doesn't include the, the news users see and do not really share. And the second class of methods is uh, building news exposure using uh, web browsing histories of users. Basically, a news, uh, news diet of a user consists of all the news articles they have read on news websites. But again, this does not include the news that they have received on social media platforms but did not uh, click on. So the first objective of our study is to present an efficient methodology to provide a comprehensive view on user news, ex uh, on users news exposure and consumption on social media platforms. And our idea was to ask people to donate data about what they receive and what they interact with on social media platforms. Precisely, we do this study on Facebook as it is one of the most prevalent platforms. Uh, to automate this data donation, we have built a browser extension called Check My News. Uh, this uh, extension is designed to capture the news users receive and how they interact with it. Uh, it works silently in the background, users can install it easily, and it does not disturb uh, user experience, which means that it provides uh, an ideal experimental uh, platform. Now, uh, what data do we precisely collect? We have two categories. The first, is the, uh, first category is exposure data which uh, consists of all the news-related posts users receive. Uh, basically, we collect all the posts that were shared by a news organization or all the posts that have lent a URL to news domains. And the second class of data collected is the interaction data. And this includes, first, uh, visible interactions that are visible to a user's friends, such as like, comment, and share. And then we have the hidden interactions that are not visible to a user's phone, such as clicking on the source, clicking on the image of the post, or accessing the landing URL. Another crucial aspect of our methodology is the list of news providers we consider. Basically, to have a broad and a comprehensive view of news uh, exposure, we need a comprehensive list of news providers. And to build this, we have first relied on media bias fact check and news guard two journalistic agencies that survey the U.S. news media ecosystem. And from uh, these sources, we got over 4,000 uh, established news sources. However, there are some reports saying that these lists are not complete, as there are several domains and the news uh, pages that are not listed by them. So to, uh, uh, to build upon this list, we, uh, our idea was to check the Facebook globally, which is a publicly uh, available tool that lists all the political advertisements that are running on Facebook. And from the ad library, we have extracted all Facebook pages that promoted political content and that uh, have a news media related category. 
using this method, we will be able to extract 8,000 extra additional list domains. This is, uh, to the best of my knowledge, the most comprehensive list of most providers active in the US. We then uh, recruited 472 users, uh, US based, using the crowdsourcing platform Prolific, and have asked them to install our monitoring tool and keep it active for six weeks. The data collection was performed uh, around the US presidential elections, and we tried to get users from different backgrounds. Uh, we wanted to get representations from all age, gender, location, ethnicity, and political affiliation in the United States. And using this data collection, we were able to collect over 143,000 user related posts. So, using this data, the first thing we analyze is to which extent are users exposed to misinformation. For this, we rely on quality labeling provided by Media Voice Fact Check and Regard. Uh, so basically, for each domain, they say whether it's known for repeatedly sharing misinformation and conspiracy theories, or whether it's mostly factual. And our results show that 63% of news related posts in media come from sources known for posting factual information. And on this hand, 5% of news users receive are from sources known for uh, sharing misinformation. The things in the middle are either uh, have either mixed evaluations or are not evaluated at all. Next. Uh, we are interested in understanding what are the reasons that drive this misinformation exposure. What is the underlying mechanism behind that? So, given the information, uh, misinformation that appears in user's feed, we have four scenarios. The user received it either because they have decided to follow this misinformation source, which constitutes uh, a kind of selective news exposure. Second, because one of the offline or a random page they follow have uh, reached this misinformation, which consists uh, of a network or incidental news exposure. Third, we have uh, explicit recommendation from uh, the Facebook platform uh, in the form of suggested audio posts. And finally, we have the targeted news exposure when advertisers pay the ad platform to show this misinformation to users. And interestingly, we find that the selective uh, exposure has the highest rate of misinformation which means that users are more likely uh, to receive misinformation because they have actively selected to follow the misinformation sources rather than being uh, exposed to it through either the targeting or through their friends. Next, we analyze uh, whether uh, Facebook news diets are politically diverse. Again, we rely on labeling provided by media bias fact check and news guide. So for each news domain, they provide a political bias labeling, either left, right, or center. We define a bias variable that uh, measures the diversity of news uh, diet. Uh, it's a binary variable. It, uh, it equals to if each side of the political spectrum represents one third of the news diet. Basically, uh, one third of the posts are from left leaning sources, and one third of the posts are from right leaning sources. And our uh, shows the fraction of users with balanced news diets, considering all news related posts the user receives in the second column, and in the third column, we consider only news posts users have received from sources they follow, using the selective and exposure. And here, we first but 35% of users have diverse political, uh, uh, politically diverse news diets. And second, we see that when we consider only the selective uh, news sources, we see that uh, it gets more polarized. This means and suggests that users mainly subscribe to sources of the same political level, uh, which is the selective exposure, but news diets get more diverse through the other mechanisms, which are the targeted algorithmic and incidental news. Finally, we measure how users, uh, how users, we use the content on Facebook. And the first thing we analyze is whether users engage with content with opposing political views. So given a Republican user and a Democrat user, we see how they interact with right-leaning uh, Republican sources and how they interact with posts from left-leaning uh, Democrat sources. First, we look at visible interactions that are visible to our friends. And as we expected, we find that the Republican users are more likely to interact with right-leaning sources, and Democrat users are more likely to interact with left-leaning sources. However, we also look at uh, invisible interactions, and surprisingly, we find that, for instance, Republicans are more likely to perform these interactions with left-leaning sources. 
This suggests that users are willing to engage with opposing views, but in a private manner that is not visible to the Next, we, we check with the users, check uh, the news article before they share uh, information. So let's say a user receives a, a post with some uh, summary in the Facebook post and the Mandic article. And we find that if you have clicked on the Mandic article and checked the information, only 14% of all the posts they have shared. So as a takeaway, uh, in this study, we present an innovative and effective measurement approach that allows to give a better understanding of news exposure and consumption. Uh, we believe that this approach uh, should be applied on other social media platforms. We make our code base open source to increase and to, to, to research in this direction. Second, we adopt a mechanistic perspective on news exposure. We believe that this is uh, necessary and interesting as we observe statistically significant differences regarding news information and the political diversity between the category and this method allows to understand the root cause behind the dangers which are misinformation and political polarization. And finally, I want to conclude this talk by talking about the targeted news exposure where advertisers pay the ad platform to show information. Uh, we find that this targeted exposure represents a significant fraction, 10% of all the news posts. And uh, we need to understand that when it comes to targeted, the danger is not only misinformation. It could be uh, factual information uh, to, 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 to users' beliefs or users' personalities, like what happened with Cambridge Analytica scandal. And uh, uh, it is more alarming considering that Facebook has a Facebook News Index, which is a list of news providers that are exempt from regular or from uh, the ad authorization process, and their ads are not listed in the Facebook ad library, which means that basically there is no way to scrutinize them by editors. Thank you for your attention, and I'll be happy to answer your questions.